True to my word, I did not eat the final piece of meat until my plan to protect the fire and dryer was in motion. While the mushrooms keep me from getting sick, this water is still disgusting to drink. With every sip, I imagine capybara relieving themselves in the river. They are not exactly considerate or respectful of my situation. Although it is not life-threatening, it is still a problem. Like the fire in the dryer, I need to find a solution to this problem as well. Seriously? Tengo buena suerte, so today is the day for bananas. While I could have chopped those adult trees down for more banana leaves, I think that would be a bad idea. I do need banana leaves, but I also have access to fern leaves and the sapling banana trees that do not produce fruit. I think that chopping down the adult banana trees would be like killing the goose that lays the golden eggs, as the Americans say. Now it was time to put my idea to the test. It looked like it was still the rainy season, yes. so I imagine that this test is coming soon. It's working! It's working! I screamed out loud to the fire. This is a much better solution to waiting and praying for a stretch of dry weather to eat protein, which I desperately need.
After taking down that large cat and saving the fire, I felt a huge surge of confidence. Perhaps I could take down one of the large beasts outside of camp? Hi, <gasps> que lastima! It appears I still need more... What? What is this? Maybe if I run away, he will not follow. I could feel him taking swings at my back. He is much more agile than me. Perhaps if I let him over my spike trap. The adrenaline still pumping. My first thought was to reset the trap in case he did not come alone. But then cooler heads prevailed, and I realized I must dispose of the body. I will not eat the meat. I destroyed it, but I am concerned that it was touching my jaguar meat. It did not matter. I could not waste the jaguar meat. I had to look past it. I needed to replace my spear. I was lucky to have killed the jaguar so efficiently. If I did not have the weapons I needed, the next encounter would result in death. Still filled with the adrenaline from my encounter with the native, I cannot hit the mark. As my head cleared, I realized I had so many questions for this man. Why did he try to murder me? Had he been on a hunting trip and I had infiltrated his home? Am I the murderer? It does not matter. Negocios son negocios, as we say in my line of work. And this is no different. It is just a different type of business. The business of life and death. And I must come out on top if I am to ever see my wife and son ever again. The main downside to being able to keep a fire going at all times was needing fuel for it, but this is a small downside. I needed only to remember to constantly gather sticks while I was out and about scouting.
confirmed my GPS location and decided to scout a bit to ensure that the native had come alone. I figured now is as good a time as any to practice my aim again. It appears now to have improved. Now that I knew the native probably came alone, I figured it was time to do some more long distance scouting to identify recognizable landmarks. Maybe even find a coconut. Or another toucan! It was in that moment I realized I needed to come up with a use for all the feathers I was accumulating. I was almost ecstatic at this one point, as I thought an armadillo a few meters in front of me was a coconut. The search continues. It was just another example of how deceiving the jungle can be. When you are desperate, there are mirages of hope everywhere. I thought this spot might be a good place for an outpost. A place at high altitude to burn a campfire to get noticed by someone looking for me. But I wish to continue my search. It was too late to construct something similar to what I had at the other camp anyway. I decided to take a large rock that I had picked up earlier back to the camp, as it gave me an idea to kill prey more easily. But something caused me to drop the rock. Something amazing. I had finally found my coconut. This is life-giving. I poked holes in it and drank deeply, knowing what I would do with it next. I ran back to the camp with excitement. It was all beginning to fall into place. I was so excited and running so fast that I stumbled onto a solution for the evasive Amadio. His sacrifice will be remembered.
With the rains coming, I knew what I needed to do with the coconut. There would be no more drinking from dirty riverbeds unless I wanted to. And after this discovery, why would I want to? It has been so long since I have eaten crab. My last time was in Cancun with my wife and son, and now that I have these small creature comforts, I am reminded of them. I am worried because it has been three days that I have not seen or heard any noises of rescue. My employer should know by now there is a problem. Now that I have some supplies, I have decided to be more forceful with my exploration. Find the plane, the cargo on the plane, and use the radio for help. I knew there was not much I could do tonight except prepare for the next day. I remembered the surplus of feathers I have and along with my survival training devised a new weapon, a much quieter and efficient weapon, just in case. By the glow of the firelight in the dead of night and the hissing of the iguana, I decided to construct ammo for this new weapon. My god, it was only this morning I was scrounging for water like a desperate man, and now I am gorging myself. Yes, things are looking up. I decided to burn the rest of the feathers. I have enough arrows to learn how to shoot, and they are better served as fuel for the fire. I think I prefer the hammock. The hut is well constructed, 
but the hammock will keep me safe from nighttime pests like bugs and other worms. I still had mushrooms left over, so I decided to use them so I could preserve the water in the coconut husks. <sighs> Even though I would be scouting today, I would still require provisions when I get back and this trap should provide easy protein when I return to camp. Time to test a new weapon. I should probably target the most clueless one. I have learned something today. Aim for the head. That is what got the Jaguar, and that is what has got this peccary. As I harvested the meat from the peccary, I could tell it was much fattier than the other prey I had downed. This is nutritious meat. I made sure to separate the inedibles with the edibles, so as not to put the wrong one to my mouth. Thank you. 
I resurveyed the area and was not satisfied with it. I wanted to continue exploring. Que la fregada. These ants are deadly. Fuck. I screamed aloud, and rightfully so. Their bite is quite painful. How fortuitous, though, as moments prior to running into the ant mound, I had picked up an herb with antihistamine properties. It would work much better than a normal bandage, and help me to maintain my sanity by soothing the pain. The bites are swollen and run deep, but this bandage should help. In clearing some brush to get sticks, I came upon a curious bulb. I will find the use for it. When I initially inspected it, it did not appear to be edible.
After many long days and nights, I finally got some dried meat. This meat, like our weight, would last many days. I must improve upon this setup. I decided to cook the strange bulb. Perhaps the fire would channel some nutrition from it. I also decided to drink the rest of the water. I hoped it was not the start of the dry season. Now that I had more meat for the dryer, I needed to come up with a more permanent solution. 